wanting to have a go at me. I, I don't really mind that. He was just lying right up in on the gutter, and I went to him, and he got up, but I could see he couldn't fly away. So my biggest concern is their wings. He's having no problem getting them right out. So I'm, I'm happy with all the bones, I guess, from, from here on. Hey, buddy. Everything else I'm not too sure about. Hi, I'm Lisa. Nice to meet you. It's a quick consultation with emergency vet Lisa Chimes. So we'll x-ray his chest to have a look if it's in his esophagus, and we'll also x-ray his abdomen to have a look if it's further down. Come on, Harley. If Harley's esophagus has to be cut open, that's going to be awful news for Chad. It's a delicate operation and the risk is that his esophagus or food pipe may never heal properly and Harley may never be able to eat normally again. You'll be good for this, Harley. There you go. Do you want to do this? Yeah, there you go, Chris. Do you want to bring it straight through? Yep. Okay. Have a look at that. Thanks, mate. Since about 10 o'clock this morning, she's been panting, shivering, temperature drop. Yeah. John's now regretting his decision to allow Bella to have a litter. I feel so bad for doing it. One of the snakes has come out of its winter hibernation, but is still not eating. Her name is Atomic Betty. Oh, what? <laughs> Man, that's not a snake, that's a monster. Last time Chris confronted a snake at the reptile park, it was Queen Bee. She's having you for lunch. She weighs in at 35 kilograms but Atomic Betty tips the scales at a massive 100 kilograms. And she's been off of food. For a period each year, we cool her down mm. and winterise her. Um, now, we've brought her back out of that, bumped her temperatures up, and normally, she'd be looking for food. Whilst pythons don't eat every day, they do eat regularly, so the fact she hasn't eaten for three months, that's a long time, and she'd be starting to struggle because of that, so there must be something going on here. I put some local in, mate, I'm sorry. Bruno, a seven-month-old Boston Terrier, has just arrived at Bondi's Referral Hospital, Sash, in a critical condition. And he's actually been run over by his mother. The poor little guy's got a back leg which is snapped in half and he's also got a tear in his lung which is leaking. So the back leg is the least of his worries. We really need to just get that air out of his chest because that's what's going to kill him. She ate the, like, but the entire the, bottom this of it, which bottom is about... Bit a metre and a half long. Okay. Worried cousins Genevieve and Hilary are almost certain their Pomeranian Marie has swallowed some bikini string. The fact she's got a back arched says that she's, she's certainly sore there. Mm. Well, she's letting me feel all of it apart from one area. You hear that sound? He's usually very outgoing and has lots of fun. <laughs> <laughs> You're safer in there, aren't you? This is not like him. Usually he's the first one out of the cage. Five-year-old Lucky has been in a fight and come out second best. Owner Stephen is worried that after two days, Lucky is getting much worse. Uh -huh. So there's the bigger one there. Yep. And he's got a matching one here. But they're very tender to touch as well. So that kind of looked to me like it could have been a dog or another big cat. Oh, the Lucky has invented a new fighting move involving a, a back kick of some description. Come through, come through cat. Yeah. All the more likely scenario is that Lucky was running away at the yeah, time. I think that's probably Which, right which doesn't that. paint, a, a, I guess, a bright picture in terms of Lucky's A, fighting ability, or B, bravery. Yeah, it's all right. Excellent. It's not light. No, no. it's not. <laughs> Philip, Andrea and their son Emmanuel arrive at the clinic with the badly incapacitated Diesel. OK, let's have a look at this leg here. I've never felt this before in a joint. It actually creaks. What worries me is what causes creaking is, is bone rubbing on bone. Ooh. And can that be rectified or...? We just don't know. We'll have to look at the x-rays to, to know for sure. The way it is at the moment, you wouldn't even think you'd have six months of good life on that leg. How are you? I'm Chris. Chris. How are you, Mike? Nice to meet you. Hi, Hello, Chris. Catherine. Thanks for coming out. I've got to say, I've seen some weird things, but I've never seen anything like this. Schnitzel is just 16 months old. Two months ago, the Dachshund began displaying obsessive behaviour with newborn calves. It's got to the point where he just will not leave them. He sleeps with them night and day, and unless we dragged him inside to eat, um, I think he would just stop eating altogether. What do you think they're offering that you're not? I don't know. I don't let him lick my mouth. <laughs> You have a try? <laughs> no, we, 
As long as he doesn't do that to you. No, no that's right. right. No, that's what I'd be worried about. <laughs> Won't be doing that. And the calf's a lot bigger, and with a good kick, it could really do him damage. Exactly. I mean, it could, it could kill him. Yeah, and that's one of the things that we were worried about. Mm. I can't help but notice he's got a bandage on his leg. What's going yes. on there? A bit of tough love. One of his friends stood on his toe. It's one thing to be trodden on, but it's another thing to be kicked in the head. That could be deadly. <laughs> Oh, good man. Have some of this good stuff. It looks like he's having a problem with his balance. His eyes are rolling around in, this, in the sockets and he's twisting, his whole body's twisting and he, and he can't balance. We've just found him after a, a couple of weeks of being missing and it uh, looks like he's um, been hit by a car and he was trapped under the neighbour's house. Come on, sweetheart, we'll get you out. Incredibly, the three-year-old Siamese survived a badly broken leg and no food for two weeks. Ooh. It's quite a nasty fracture. Their bones are really quite displaced. And, mm. um, and I guess the really hard thing about it is the fact it's two weeks down the track and they're going to they're gonna they're try trying and stay to there use, now. Yeah. Yeah. Turns out this is not the first time the Siamese adventurer has gone missing. He got into um, our cleaner's ute and went for a week's holiday in the back of the ute, so that was fun. There's going to be a lot of fibrous tissue around that and scar tissue, and it's going to make it very difficult to loosen things up and get the bone back in the right position. I'd rather prefer him breaking his leg than being dead. Dino. Hi, mate. How are you, buddy? Good, yes. I've been waiting for you. Yeah, I bet, I bet. So... The rabbit. Rabbit's up there on uh, on duty. <laughs> what the hell is this? Maxi? This is nice, I like this. It suits you. It's got ears on me as well. It's got ears on <laughs> How'd you find it? Just down North Wondai, near the outdoor gym there. We were just like running in the bush and kept running through our legs. It took us about like an hour to catch it. The lifeguards were alerted to the lost bunny at 7am. Their first rescue of the day. Yeah, if it had gone on the road, it would have been a pretty... Sad sight, but yeah, thankfully it didn't, and uh, it's worked out really well. well I think it pissed on me. <laughs> <laughs> the bunny appears to be 12 months old and looks too placid to be feral. Now she's a Bondi rabbit for sure. <laughs> <laughs> so what are we in the core? Uh, she, had, she had the old Von zippers on. What about Von? Von, 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 Von the Bondi rabbit. Give it a kiss, Maxie. <laughs> See, that's nice, isn't it? I'll, um, I'll be in touch. Thanks, Bono. No worries. Yeah, I've never seen him like this. He looks pretty flat. That's a boy. Having a really high temperature like this is really risky because basically it, it, it could cook their brain. Uh, so we really need to cool him down as soon as possible because if it climbs any higher, that's going to be life threatening. Hey, bud, you're feeling pretty awful, aren't you? We've got to get him on IV fluids and run some blood tests to try and work out what is going on here. One thing that can be a problem for them is in the impact they can tear a blood vessel in their chest, in their lungs, and if they bleed into that then obviously they, they can't breathe through blood. He's very excitable, happy dog. That's what this is, the stillness is what worries me. Wait till mum and daddy see you tomorrow. Why don't they get a surprise? This is incredible. Woody's been hanging at the window by his back legs. To me, it looks like he's tried to escape and actually got stuck by his back legs. Now, if the police didn't arrive when they did, Woody'd be dead. So front way's out? Yeah, front way's out. Yeah. Where was he stuck about? So, just these ones. Oh, right, yeah. I'll get to those in a second. I just want to check out the front half here. In Woody's desperation to get out that window, he's worn down pretty much his entire dew claw. And that's where all that blood's come from. But to do that sort of damage, he must have been hanging there for hours. Oh, Woody, what have you done to yourself, buddy? A distressed seven-month-old golden retriever has been rushed into the Bondi Referral Hospital sash. Danny is struggling to walk and breathe. He came in here when he was about eight weeks old. He was bitten by a tick and almost died. He was on a ventilator for four days. And we were so worried he wasn't going to make it and we all became so attached to him and I'm just so worried about him being back here so soon. 
This time, owners David and Rosaline are convinced a plastic object is stuck in Danny's throat. Little okay. oh, sweetheart. He had a feel and he said it's something... It's a long plastic. <laughs> if Mr Lamb hadn't felt something stuck in Danny's throat, then I would be absolutely certain that he's got a paralysis tick. OK. Let's get an X-ray. Danny's just a baby and it's cruel that he has to go through something like this again. It's midday and the clinic closes for lunch. Vet student Laura has let the kittens run amok. All of them are in the adoption program and looking for new homes. This one's Bradley. Hello, Bradley. One, two, three. You alright, Ed? Yeah, Happy? Yeah, mate, could you come and help, Chris? Yeah. Just put a bit of weight on that. Lizzie will watch you behind for any gators coming up. So we can just get him to open up a little bit. Come on, mate, open up. We've got the stick in there. Now, we get this pipe in. There's that beautiful moment when they've subdued Alfie, the pipe goes in, and then it's over to me. And there's just a few mils of PVC between me and those beautiful crunching alligator jaws. And that pipe's been tested. And he's oh. up. Well, it hasn't cracked yet. Now's gonna be the test. I hope he's frightened, I am. <laughs> he scales that? Yeah. How? Chris has received a plea for help from the baffled Stefan. Somehow scaled up the drain pipe. His dog Splodge is constantly escaping. Uh, one of my neighbors gave me a call at work and said, Stefan, are you at home? I said, no, I'm at work. Why? And he goes, your dog is on my roof. On your roof? My first impression of Splodge is he's tiny. How does he get up on roofs? Is this for real? The only theory we have, hmm. um, and it sounds crazy, is that he uses the vine. Well, what's this here? Looks to me like that's where Splodge has actually scratched at the bark. Stefan's never been able to catch his dog in the act, but Splodge is quite happy to show off his acrobatic climbing abilities in the garden shed. Right now, there's a fair bit on Splodge's rap sheet. He scratches, he chews, he poos in the house. That was it. One day was just once too much. As long as there's someone home, he is the most extremely well-behaved, adorable dog you can imagine. Aside from the mystery of how he gets out, I've got serious concerns about his safety. And he could live up to his name. Splodge could go splodge. The little Houdini has already had a near-death experience. He ran out onto the road and he got hit by a car. And, uh, you know, he broke his leg and that was very traumatic for him, for us, um, for everyone. Andrew and his daughter, Emily, have just rushed to the Bondi Referral Hospital, Sash. I might pop her on the floor, actually, then I can see if she can stand. Their much-loved four-year-old Labrador, Chino, is suddenly experiencing uncontrollable seizures. Hey, you are, Chino. Chino's been swimming at the beach about two hours ago, and then she suddenly started tremoring in her face and all over her body. It's most likely something she's eaten. She's playful, very energetic and, and awesome with the family, but um, yeah, not well today. She's a beautiful dog, yeah. You like Gina? Mm -hmm. She's been exposed to some sort of toxin. I don't know what it is, and I really need to try and work out what's going on here. Hold down. Come on. That's OK. As Chino's family waits for news, the poison attacks her system again. <laughs> it's OK. Eight-week-old Samson is lapsing in and out of consciousness and is just hanging on. Really scary, his eyes sort of rolled a little bit and... Okay. And when he, we, sh we shook him, he just... Definitely nothing. wasn't normal, definitely wasn't, yeah. like, just normal yeah. thing. Has he been scratching a lot with the, yeah, the flu? Yeah, loads, yeah. Has he been wormed? Did... Well, the guy, when I spoke to him, he's, he advertised saying eight weeks and we went to see him and he was just standing up in front of his house with his cage and we were all like, OK, this is a bit dodgy. Yeah. 
And then he said, oh, by the way, he's only seven weeks. And we were just like, I just want to get this kid home. Yeah. I was so just, just, it was not right. But he hasn't, I don't think he's come from a good place. Yeah. The girls have told me that Samson hasn't been wormed or vaccinated. Now, that mightn't seem like a big deal, but just look at Samson right now. Because those shots weren't given at all, he's now fighting for his life. He's running a fever as well. Yeah, so he's actually high. He's a stoic little guy, he's tough. He just doesn't show a lot of pain. Mm, that's it. How can you just pack your gear up and walk away and say, no, nah, it's too hard? You can't. You look sad. I am a bit. He's um, a little sweetheart. I shouldn't get attached, but I do. Mm. We do need to talk about a name too. Leroy. Leroy. As in Leroy Brown. <laughs> Baddest lamb in the whole damn town. Aren't you? Leroy. I think Leroy is cute. Good luck. luck. Thank you. Thanks. Yep, there's the paperwork for Nasty. Thank you. Okay. This big dog has just come and taken a massive grip around the top of his chest and, and has literally torn the skin open. It's just awful. Eight-month-old Scruffy has just been mauled by a pit bull terrier. He was just shaking him like a rag doll. Terrible. Oh, yeah. I was screaming and crying. It was terrible. Lisa places a catheter into Scruffy's leg so she can pump in pain relief and antibiotics. Hello. At the Bondi Clinic, the subject of dog breeds has also become a talking point. This little girl is, I think, about 12 weeks old, and um, she's up for adoption, and I'm considering adopting her. My main worry is to find out if there's some pit bull in her. Um, I believe they're not all bad, but um, I'm just still concerned about that type of breed of dog with a young child. I'll give you my opinion. Bull Terrier cross Kelpie, but there is actually a way to be exact. Really? Yeah, okay. so we can actually take a DNA test. Wow. Okay. And, and the truth will be revealed. I figured he might be in a little bit of trouble, kind of the way he was walking, the way he was using his wing and stuff, so uh, we couldn't really leave him there, so we decided we'd grab him. Is there a name for him? We've been calling him Harmon. But... Harmon. <laughs> <laughs> so was he unable to move when you when you saw him? No, he wasn't unable to move. He just seemed like he didn't really want to. Didn't really want to move that much. He just seemed like he was kind of struggling, and he did move. He's not meant to be in a bathtub. Yeah. So in his mind, he's freaking yeah. out right now. Harmon must be terrified. I'm thinking the poor little guy normally lives in the penguin colony on the northern side of the harbour. And during last night's storm, he's been tossed around and blown way off course. That explains how he ended up being washed ashore at Bondi at 3 a.m. But it doesn't explain why he's so weak and why he's left himself so open to predators. Mm -hmm. Good buddy. Mm -hmm. Go get better, huh? Okay, thank you guys. Yeah, thank you so mm -hmm. much. I can't feel anything stuck well, here. They were very small. <laughs> were they small ones? <laughs> I know oh, it's embarrassing. Yeah, it's embarrassing. It's the from <laughs> One tiny G-string could cause Ava serious internal problems. There is a chance it can pass through and she'll poop it out, but there's probably more risk than anything that it's going to get stuck somewhere along her gut, and that's bad news for Ava because that would mean surgery. The easiest way to get them out would be to make her vomit, which happens pretty quickly. Yeah. We give her yeah. an injection. Yeah. Um, if she vomits, it will come out, hopefully come out straight away, but there is a big risk with making them vomit because it's it's something that, that is yeah. Yeah, yeah, fabric, course, course. that when they vomit, they can actually choke on it, and, and that can be life-threatening. You found it at Malabar throwing the sticking off the rocks. Came back like this, and I thought you had a twitch or something. Picked up a stick with a blue bottle on it, and then he was shaking his head. So definitely stung by a blue bottle. Blue bottles are a constant danger on Australian beaches. Along the line of the blue bottle tentacle are a whole lot of stinging cells. Now these, once they detect skin or the inside of Kaiser's mouth in this situation, they fire a little arrow and that arrow contains a toxin. Not only is that extremely painful, the worrying thing for me right now is that this is going to start to shut off that airway and in a boxer like Kaiser, there's not much room to start with. Yeah. 
Yeah, there's a little bit of swelling around the back of his throat there. Gonna... That lymph gland is just the slightest bit enlarged actually at the moment. What I might do straight away is give him an injection of a corticosteroid to try and um, basically reverse the effects of any allergic reaction he could be having to the sting. Okay. Do you mind if I take him out the back to give him this? No. I just need to get someone to actually hold that vein up for him. Yeah, that's no, alright. He's alright. Thanks, mate. I won't be a second. The worrying period for me is the next 10 or 20 minutes. That is the time when it could shut down the airway altogether. There's no reason why a blue bottle sting to a dog in that mouth or throat area couldn't be fatal. Good oh, man. Is he alright or what? Touch wood, eh? about blue bottles is that it's once they hit the lymph glands they can have pretty dramatic effects on the circulation they can cause a pretty big drop in in blood pressure kaiser has just been stung on the mouth by a blue bottle his breathing's just a, it's just a little bit gurgly at the moment and he, he's, he's quite agitated chris and lisa are learning to deal with some tough realities performing desexing operations in the most primitive conditions it also makes me realise how tough these people do it. I mean, this is making me panic. I just have to try and accept that I'm out of my comfort zone here. Okay, little ones. And you can, you're happy to watch, but just stay away from the table because it needs to stay clean, okay? Without her, they can't move their crops the two kilometres down from the hills. So, to clean this wound, we need to get Dundu to an area where we have a bit of space and it's nice and level. Where Dundu has that cut is a very sensitive area. So not only does it stop Dundu from working, it's also at great risk of getting infected. And either one of those situations would be devastating for this village. Uh, she got up on her back legs in the corner and uh, flipped over and landed on the back. Lisa and Graham are on their way to examine Nigel's badly injured Maltese Terrier, eight-year-old Etty. Yesterday she got really, really bad. She could hardly walk. She, her back legs were crossing and she was tipping over. And um, then I heard you guys were coming to town and it was like angels from heaven. <laughs> because she's, she's, she's been through a lot and um, she doesn't deserve to be in pain. That's the main thing. Mm, <laughs> we were just having some champagne with some clients and serving some customers and this dog just ran in through my back door and just pretty much collapsed at my feet. Owner Rebecca was letting Willow out of the car when her husky cross ran off. I didn't hear a screeching of um, tyres or anything like that. I just sort of heard her screeching. Willow can no longer move her back legs and is lashing out at everyone trying to help her. She turned around and got me by the hand, so she's... Got a couple of teeth right through my thumb there. Actually, she's got the, the black running through here as well. Yeah. So I'd say she has actually been been hit by a car. Looking oh. at that. All right. Okay. She's got some deep pain sensation. <coughs> so she can actually sense that there, which is good. For me, what I'm feeling the most is around her her pelvis. I bend up her, her femur on her left side, I bend that up, it feels fine. Yeah. It's just when I start to, to really move that joint around around her pelvis, that's when she responds. At the Bondi Referral Hospital Sash, a ringtail possum has been brought in after being found by a roadside. Now this possum is dead, but what I need to do is check if it's a female, if there's a baby in the pouch, because that's the most important thing we can do for now. Oh, little guy, come on. Oh. oh, no. It makes me so upset to see this, because it's just... He's just desperate for his mum, and it's really important that we're going to keep him warm, get some food into him, and just keep our fingers crossed that, that he makes it. Oh. Why would he come in the water? Good question. First of all, it, it's quite hot, so yeah. he's, he could be quite dehydrated. The other thing is that um, he could be trying to shed his skin. Right. If it looks like I'm really taking my time here, I am. And there's a very good reason for that. I'm still not convinced as to what sort of snake we're dealing with here. There are two main possibilities. 
first of all, a diamond python, which is what I'm hoping for. The second possibility is a broad-headed snake. They're venomous. They look very similar. They're a little bit shorter, but people have died through confusing a broad-headed snake for a diamond python. I don't really want to be one of them. Good boy. How long has he had it on there for? Uh, it's been about an hour. Harry the parrot is making an after-hours visit to the Bondi Clinic. Somehow he's managed to get a gold bell wedged onto his beak. So you've been trying to get it off? Uh, we tried, yeah, we tried it on me and my, uh, my other half, but to no avail. But helping a stressed out bird with a bling problem is not going to be easy. The hardest aspect of getting this bell off is the fact that Harry doesn't like being held. Come on. Come on. Oh. How do you get a bell off a beak from a bird that doesn't like being touched? That's a challenge. He likes the two beads, yeah. and so we're getting like wicker bags of beads, and I think the bell was in there. All right, so I'm gonna have to find a way here of basically catching him yeah. with my hands, mm -hmm. but securing that beak, because that beak is, is quite powerful, even though it's mm -hmm. got the, the bell on it. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you, you know about it when, it when it gets you. The more Harry flies around, the more stress he puts on his whole system, and the more difficult it becomes for me. If we're gonna get that bell off, it has to be quick, Otherwise, stress can kill Harry. I picked her up off her bed and she's really wobbly on her back legs and then she just peed red blood, like dark red blood, and I thought, no, something's really wrong now. Bobby is rushed to Lisa for examination. A snake bite appears to be the most likely cause, but this is not a straightforward case. People think that snake bites are always obvious, you know, dogs foaming at the mouth, collapsing, but sometimes the signs are a lot more vague and they can take hours, even up to days, before you notice that something's wrong. Just turn up, little puppy. If you live in an area that is known to have snakes, you should never rule out a snake bite if your dog is unwell. Jeanette is worried about her Norwich Terrier, Bindi, who's having problems with her first litter of pups. Oh, here it goes. Even though she's five and a half and I guess a in the dog world, a mature mother. It's to be expected that she's just not, not too sure about the whole thing. Oh. Did you get a bite there? I did. You OK? Yeah, it's a nice bite. <laughs> this breed is notorious for difficult births because of their small pelvis. What's its name? This is Zaheer Horatio Sampson Althea Tallulah Phineas. <laughs> Hard to name when you don't know the sex. Hang on, I'm going to get this down. Being called on to sex a bearded dragon isn't your everyday request. You can't just look for things hanging down. With a bearded dragon, what you're looking for are bulges. When you lift up the tail, if it's a male, you'll see two very subtle bulges just above the bottom. If it's a female, just one bulge. But quite often, it's really hard to tell. There it is. So if you can see, I've got my finger underneath the lump there. It's 50 cent piece sized. Yep. All right, mate. Meg's got a dramatically enlarged mammary gland. So one of her little teats and the gland associated with it is a huge size. It's sore, it's hot, and it's a big concern because if that gland isn't functioning, she just can't support a young. It's also the most likely reason why her last two joeys did not survive. You are right, Meg? <laughs> Martha? <laughs> Nah, we <laughs> wish. Nice. It'd be nice if it was, we wouldn't wish. it? Out on Alligator Lagoon, Chris and keepers Tim and Obi are searching for the badly injured Martha. The 30-year-old alligator was attacked by a young male. There she is, right there. Hey, I've been in this for a long time and I've never seen anything like this. A beer in there or what's... No, it's in an esky because it's a bit different than all the others. Have a look at that. You tell me what it is. There's one last patient to see before Chris heads home. That is just abnormal, isn't it? Do you know what it is? Well, the nose like that's either going to be a platypus or an echidna. Yeah. But it's, yeah, it's got to be an echidna. Yeah, it's an echidna, it is, isn't it? and it's bizarre, isn't it? Look, I've never seen anything like it. I, I didn't know if I was holding an alien when it first came <laughs> in. And... You've got legs, you've got claws, you've got a, almost a beak there. It's like four animals all combined into one weird little skin-covered package. Where do you pick up the, the lamb nappies? I've never actually <laughs> seen the nappies with a hole in the back of the tail. Well, they're custom made, okay. aren't they? We custom make them every morning. Um, aisle three at your local supermarket? <laughs> right. Or? And the diarrhoea she's had 
you, you, you don't really want to see this. It's, the technical name for that is, is scouring. Scours is essentially another word for severe diarrhea, but it's diarrhea with a nasty effect. It dehydrates them, it takes away their electrolytes, and it means they're not absorbing energy. And scours, it's probably the number one cause of mortality, of, of, of death in, in young lambs and in calves. All right, well, we need to fix it. Yeah, we do. Hey, Coco, take a look at you. Deirdre saved him from death row at a shelter six months ago. I take him for walks on the lead and everybody stops and wants to pat him and he's always making friends with kids. Um, yeah, they love him. Have you got a name for him? Oh, look, well, between a few of us, we wanted to call him Aussie because he's a little battler at the moment. My guess is that he's a young male. He's been kicked out by a territorial male and he's just trodged through the bush. He's picked up all these ticks and he turns up in suburbia. There's 20, 30 right there. My worry is that he's got 40 or so ticks in that container. He's probably got another, at least 40 on him there. Yeah. If each of those has, say, half a mil yeah. of blood, even a quarter of a mil, that's 10 mils of blood. Yeah. He's got to be severely anemic as it is. Yeah. Uh, underweight, dehydrated, he's got a lot of things going against him. Can you just explain what's happened? Uh, mate, I was upstairs at the house and I heard the dogs barking. Yeah. And when I got out there, uh, he was in the corner and my dogs attacked him. 12-year-old Tosca is in trouble after a backyard brawl with one of his canine housemates. You didn't see him being shaken or...? No, I didn't see anything. By the time I got off there, my dog was off him. Have you ever fought before? Uh, no, he's he's always growling at him and, but he, and having goes at him, but he's he's always backing off. He's, yep. he's, never, um, he's never done it before, no. OK. Yeah, can we get some oxygen? Yep. Get in the way today, did you, Tosca? Hey, buddy. It's kid calm there, mate. My concern is that Brooklyn's got something called hip dysplasia, so it's a genetic problem. They're born with it. It is so much worse than See you described. I, I honestly am shocked. A hip should be a ball and socket, and in Brooklyn's case, I fear that her socket has, is underdeveloped, so the ball doesn't sit in the socket. It, slips out every time she walks. It's not a curable disease, so we have to do pretty drastic surgeries to fix it. Don't tickle her head in the right spot, she lets you know. Back at the Bondi Clinic, a new patient has arrived for Chris, a pet cockatiel called Cheeky. We go almost everywhere together. Shower, shops, bike riding, car, bank, yep. Do you both want to come through? Who do I ask, Cheeky or you, Brenna? I both. Both, OK. <laughs> I've noticed some drops of blood today she, um, on the bathroom floor, so okay. um, she is bleeding, not from her feet, I think from her genitals, so I was really quite worried about that. Oh. <laughs> you sort of just have to tell her, not ask her. That's I oh, really? Yeah. Got to be firm. Yeah. She's a, she's a strong woman. She is. So if you just tell her what you want to do, she'll do it. She likes assertive men. She does. <laughs> it's always been a problem. <laughs> Come on. Now, Cheeky, no. Yeah, you're going to get up there. Thank you. That's the way you go. It's how you treat a woman. <laughs> In your backyard? Not that I know of, no. Yeah. Has he vomited at all? Not that I know of, no. OK, I'll take him through straight away. We just need to see what's in his stomach, because to me this looks like a poison, like he's taken on board some sort of toxin. We're just getting a thermometer. I'm just worried if he has ingested something, he could be overheating and going to some sort of hypothermia. Yeah, so it's 41.3 degrees, so he's very hot. So can we get a cool bag of fluids, Neil? Yeah. Hey, buddy, just going to settle down, mate. I know, I know what's going on, OK? To be honest, I am a little bit scared of reptiles. They give me the creeps. And treating or handling one of these is a bit of a nightmare for me. Hi, little one. You can't really trust him. I've been bitten by her actually a while back when she was smaller. I had to go to hospital for that. I'm going to actually, if you don't mind, take her out the back and get Jess, our nurse, to help me get that bandage off and we can take a look. We're supposed to learn about all animals at uni, but quite honestly, all I can remember about lizards and reptiles are a few lectures we had back in third year. 
Yeah, if you can <laughs> be comfortable that you're going to hold her and that she's not going to bite me because, honestly, I don't deal with reptiles very often and I'm instilling all my faith in you. Okay. Okay. I used to work up at um, Australia Zoo Wildlife Hospital and we did a lot of um, lace monitors up there, wild ones, so I don't have a problem with a pet one. <laughs> They're really cute as babies. Very, very cute. These guys can jump metres high. They live on the side of cliff faces. It's not uncommon for one of them to go over your head. Yeah. See, I've normally got the height advantage, but here it looks like they've no. got it all over me, doesn't it? So we've just got to go through a little wallaby cage here first. In the wild now, it's sure to be less than a thousand yellowfoot rock wallabies left. In New South Wales, there's very small pockets and colonies under intense pressure from predators and feral pests, and this captive breeding program is a good way of ensuring their survival. There's a couple over here in the rock here. One coming around there. That's it, got one here. Push over this way, boys. Fast, aren't they? If there's an opportunity to grab a tail, you grab the tail. It's as simple as that. Yeah, good catch, mate. One, two, three. Uh, touch there. <laughs> no, there was no touch. <laughs> there was no touch. Oh, good catch. I think maybe I should have been chasing the brolga. He actually looked as though he was going to be a bit of an easier catch. They're laughing at me. It's really important that we're in and out really quickly because these guys get stressed pretty easily. It is quite warm today. Bring him right round. But they'll start to lick their forearms and they'll get a bit of moisture. Here it comes. That's better. No, he's gone. Hi, I'm Dr. Danny Dusek from Bondi Vet. If you love our show and want to see more, plus some amazing content about pets and how to care for them, hit the subscribe button. Click that little notification bell and we'll see you on our next video.